Well, well, if it isn't Muhammad Hijab again, and what is he up to now? This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim. I came across a YouTube video that debunks an argument that Muhammad Hijab made in his ambush debate of Apostate Prophet. A Christian YouTuber by the name Jay tears apart the following argument that Hijab made by showing how he selectively hid part of the translation in order to make his point. Hijab brought up 2561 of the Quran which says, Blessed is he who has placed in the sky great stars and placed therein a burning lamp and a luminous moon. Most interpretations obviously interpret the lamp, Siraj here, to mean the sun because the moon is also mentioned. So that makes sense. AP brought up the fact that the Quran speaks of shooting stars as being missiles to chase devils from stealing secrets from Allah. Do you think the stars do you think the stars are missiles thrown at devils, for example? And we have certainly beautified the nearest heaven with stars, and we have made from them what is thrown at the devils, and we have prepared for them the punishment of the blaze. 67.5. That this is not unscientific, because it is a matter of the unseen, ill mold glaib. Basically, you can't see devils, so you can't say this has anything to do with science. This isn't a scientific error. However, it does demonstrate something else. The Quran is assigning supernatural properties to the natural world. Neil deGrasse Tyson in the 2014 Cosmos documentary series talks about how many cultures like the Chinese used to look at comets mystically and assume some supernatural meaning behind them. Now, we live in a world where we can predict the comets with pinpoint accuracy when they will appear and where in the sky you will see them. Muhammad in the 7th century saw an eclipse and got terrified and ordered the Muslims to pray a special prayer called Salatul Khawf, the freer prayer, until the eclipse is taken away. In today's world, we know with pinpoint accuracy not just when the next eclipse is coming, but even which eclipse occurred in his lifetime in 634 AD, for example. So the Quran here is following the same pattern of giving supernatural meaning to natural phenomena. That's not very really impressive. But back to 2561. Hijab tried to demonstrate that the Quran is in line with scientific understanding. The reason he did this is because he wanted to counter apostate prophet and show that the Quran is scientific. That makes no sense because even if there's some verses that can be interpreted to match our modern understanding, there are also many others that don't. So if you're going to say that all the ones that don't didn't yet apply because we haven't discovered the truth, then the Quran's unfalsifiable. There's no point. You can't use this to prove an argument. But if you, if you do think the Quran is falsifiable and it's possible that the Quran has mistakes, then you can make an argument like this. But then in that case, even one example where the Quran is wrong will show the entire thing to be a fuss. This is a terrible example that Hijab used and I'm going to show you why. First of all, many other apologists, including most importantly Hijab's own boss at Sapient, formerly at Aida, Hamza Sotis, have shown that the scientific miracle narrative is foolhardy and should not be taken. And I think it's important that we basically remind each other on why this approach is not a good approach, it's not in line with our theology, and it's incoherent philosophically. So in the 80s, I think the early 80s, you had this commission called the Commission on the Scientific Signs in the Quran and Sunnah, which was run by Sheikh Abdul Majid Al Zindani. And what they did, they invited many scholars from the West, scientists from the West to come to Arabia to sit in a conference and to basically say, look, look at these statements in the Quran. It couldn't have come from Muhammad upon whom be peace. It can only have come from some kind of superpower, the divine, because how could, have, how could they have known such information? And this is the information that they attribute to these verses, right? And obviously in the contemporary age, we have the likes of Dr. Zakir Naik and others who basically have promoted this approach to the Qur'an which is the scientific miracles in the Qur'an. However, there's been a growing counter-movement ever since the advent of the internet, YouTube, Facebook, Muslims trying to articulate you know, the intellectual validity of Islam and its veracity. They've been using anything they can find which includes you know, these so-called scientific miracles in the Qur'an and there's been a response to the point you have academic journals like the Journal of Religion and Science wrote about this. For example, I think this was in 2001 or 2010 
The title here is Snakes from Staves, Science, Scriptures and the Supernatural in Morris Bukeo. And in this article, in this journal and other journals, they called it Bukeilism. It became a, for, a form of ism to try and read you know, scientific facts in Revelation, especially the Book of Allah. So they called it Bukeilism. Zakir Naik and the 90s approach of scientific miracles in the Quran is totally debunked now, but Hijab decided to take this approach anyway with a slightly different spin. He decided to use one of the variant readings of the Quran to try to show that in the alternate reading there are multiple sons. Says, uh, and by the way, the Quran says in chapter 25 that there are many sons because it says, Tabarak al ladi ja'ala fi samai burujan. No, it does which, not. Pardon? What does it say that? Yeah, it says in chapter 25, Tabarak al ladi ja'ala fi samai burujan wa ja'ala fiha surujan munira. There's two qira'ahs. One qira'ah says sirajan munira and surujan munira. So the sirajan munira means a, a, a shining lamp. And Suruj Munira means many stars. So a shining lamp means a star. And uh, sorry, ma many suns, uh, one sun and many suns. So in other words, the Quran says that there are many suns. The cosmic picture of the Quran, therefore, is that there are many suns, many solar systems, because suns are accompanied with solar systems. Basically, he's appealing to the scientific miracle while using the holes in the Quran issue as a feature, not a bug. First issue, if there are two readings and they contradict, they both can't be right. If the Hafs reading says lamp, Siraj, and the Khalf and Hamza reading says lamps, Suruj, they both can't be right. Lamp and lamps are totally different. So pick one. They're mutually exclusive, yet apparently all Kirat are considered equally from Allah. Second of all, the Quran only talks about one moon. What he did was translate suruj, lamps, as suns, but he did not translate qamr to moon. He left that part in Arabic only. It wasn't obvious to AP in the heat of the moment that hijab was not translating the full verse, but Jay caught this and exposed it clearly here. Alright, so what Muhammad Hijab is doing here is an attempt to argue that the Quran speaks of multiple solar systems, and the implication is that this is a scientific miracle because how could the Quran have this information in the, in the 7th century unless God revealed it. And he bases this on chapter 25, verse 61. Now, just to break down what's being said here, as Muhammad Hijab helped popularize with Yasir Qadi that there are multiple readings or qira'at of the Quran. That means that there are different versions of the Arabic Quran, which as Muhammad Hijab is pointing out here, result in very different meanings. In one reading of the verse, it uses the word surajan, which means lamp. In the singular and then in another version it uses the plural sorogen so to be clear the verse doesn't actually use the word sun it uses the word lamp and lamps but Muhammad hijab is saying that when it's in the singular it refers to sun singular and when it's in the plural it refers to suns plural and he's using this to substantiate his argument that the Quran speaks of multiple suns and therefore multiple solar systems supposedly a scientific miracle of the Quran. Now he entirely missed or skipped or omitted the word Qamaran, which means moon. And I'm going to ask you, why do you think he did that? He cites it twice in Arabic, and in Arabic he skips it as well. But he translates it in English, skips it, completely omits the word moon, and he even looks it up on his phone later, and he never corrects himself. My question is, why do you think he skipped over the word Qamar or Qamaran, the word moon? The verse is saying that God made a lamp and shining moon. Again, Muhammad Hijab cut out the word moon entirely, but the variant says lamps and a shining moon. Muhammad is arguing that lamps here refers to suns, which will grant for the sake of argument. And therefore, there are multiple solar systems. Many suns, many solar systems. However, there's a huge problem with that. The reason why he skipped over the word moon is because if you take this argument seriously, then there's only one moon for all of the solar systems in existence. Do you see how dishonesty is and why he left out the word moon now? He purposely read the verse in a way that is grammatically odd and incorrect and left it out just to make his argument work. How dishonest is that? But again, if what he's saying is true and that the Quran here in the variant reading where it says, Sorajan, lamps, plural, refers to suns, many solar systems, then he's stuck. 
how are you going to explain now that there's only one singular moon for all of the solar systems? We know that in our solar system alone, there are 200 moons. So this argument completely falls apart. It's dead in the water. Hijab should take precedent from his boss, Hamza Zotis, and stop trying to fit the Quran to science. It's time to admit that the Quran is a bunch of tales and metaphors and shouldn't be taken literally. The next step is for these Dawah guys to admit that Adam and Eve and the rest of the stories in the Quran are myths as well. That would be progress. I want to thank the Abdullah Samir team for all your support. Those of you who aren't part of the team yet, click join now below to support normalizing dissent. Click the support link for more details. This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.